Hi everyone, we are back with you, me and Marcella, to share you more about our toolkit and what we have created in the project Constellation. Marcella? Hi, nice to see you again. <laughs> We have a bit uh, already like a channel, YouTube channel, you know, that we are creating. So it would be convenient for you to uh, watch these videos and follow also how to use the toolkit. Uh, one thing that we would like to open up with you, together with you and both of us, is the meaning of the body and the movement of the body when we are working with constellations. And in general, what is the importance of the body and the mind? What's the difference between these both sort of approaches? And when we use constellations as a method, it is something that is uh, is very very useful tool, really useful. And um, yeah, and we will share a bit what we have discovered and what you can use and uh, how you can discover also during your workshops and during your classes. And I will start with the. The first question to both of us, uh, uh, why uh, we find the uh, work with body so meaningful and, and how we have discovered uh, the meaningfulnesses and usefulness when we work uh, with body and include body within our workshops. Marcella, what would you say from your side? Thank you, Laoma. Well, um, for me, um, this topic comes from personal experience and uh, hobbies uh, like dancing. So this is where I started from uh, having this uh, awareness of the importance of the body uh, because I've been dancing my whole life as uh, not as a professional, but uh, more as a hobby. And um, throughout uh, the last uh, three years, so when I was also working uh, with constellations, I realized how important it is to have this awareness of what is happening inside of the body uh, because after a while i understood that um, my body is actually like a map a map that is uh, showing me signs that is that has some checkpoints that is communicating to me to myself and uh, communicating to others and uh, it's also a way how to receive information so uh, I have been uh, really, I really took it as a challenge for myself to see every time when I work with constellations to see how to put more focus on the body as a resource, uh, as, as um, a source of wisdom, as a source of uh, uh, information, because uh, I found it much more powerful for me to actually process uh, what is happening or uh, work in constellations and to uh, to bring some kind of lasting transformation that goes beyond just thinking about something or analyzing or uh, reflecting or telling sharing stories about a certain topic um, yeah, I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> what, uh, what about you? Maybe something else uh, comes to my mind if you share. Yes, uh, I totally can agree with Marcella. That's also coming uh, from personal experience. And actually, my awareness towards the body came after physical trauma. And uh, that was a change moment for me when I realized how important is this relationship between me and the body and how I need to take care of it and how many impulses actually body are saying and how much information it holds back to us as well. And I was not aware uh, how powerful this instrument can be until I met constellations and until um, started to work on that. And I totally agree with, uh, with you that uh, constellations can uh, really uh, use this intelligence and use this uh, um, brain of the body you know that that is within us and uh, that it can uh, give us a lot of information it can give us a lot of uh, support uh, how to make decisions how to understand what's going on with us and uh, constellations as a method is really uh, brilliant uh, yeah, brilliant way how to how to discover myself, you know, and how I can help myself, you know. 
and, and I think it is about raising awareness uh, about myself and including the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we already started to touch this topic about how the body is using constellations and maybe both of us, we can comment how practically it is happening, uh, how, how it is happening. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know <laughs> actually how it is happening. I, I, I know the things that, uh, that I have experienced maybe by myself. Um, usually what happens in, in, when a constellation is set up is that there are certain sensations or feelings that uh, raise up or start showing in the body. Usually it is change of temperature, sensations, sensations, numbness in maybe in hands, in feet, uh, some discomfort, discomfort in the stomach, uh, a lot of heaviness on the shoulders. So um, these are, let's say, some uh, key, key uh, sensations in the body. And uh, then uh, just by uh, sharing this information out loud or uh, being aware of it, uh, we work with it inside of the constellation because all of this is a message. All of this means something and it is something that wants to be seen. It's something that wants to be heard or acknowledged. And a facilitator then um, works with this uh, to see what is to to test out what is maybe the 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 better option for a person inside of the constellation mm -hmm. to be a different position, a different approach. I can uh, add, yes. I can add to Marcela that yes, uh, uh, during the constellations uh, we are observing our body, you know what is happening with our own body and uh, notifying as Marcelo was saying that, okay, I feel heaviness, I feel a movement and I, I trust my body. I trust whatever movement is coming. I'm letting my body to be there. I am fully trusting myself and tru truly and fully trusting what kind of emotions and feelings are raising up in my body. Yeah. And I can also agree uh, what Marcelo told that this information is the, what the body gives, it gives us the information, okay, what's happening? Very often people are asking us, but how do you know it, that it means like that? But how do you know that uh, the, the shed, uh, heaviness of the shoulders means that this is connected something, maybe uh, pressure from the heavy decision that you need to make? What would you answer, Marcelo? <laughs> well, um... The, the thing is that that we do, we don't know uh, in in the process of leading the constellation facilitator is not the one who knows anything at all. Yeah. It is mostly about the interaction between uh, these uh, people that are inside of the constellation and what is happening, and somehow this information emerges. Uh, it happens many times that the person itself says that uh, and she says, "Okay." Yeah, there is a lot of heaviness on my shoulder and then uh, it somehow connects to the topic and it becomes clear sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes we, we really don't know. But uh, I also, when somebody asks me, okay, how do you know? I, and I, I don't know. It's some kind of a feeling or intuition and information that it comes out and that resonates with the person or resonates with the question. And somehow it's like, Oh, okay. Makes sense. <laughs> and then we move on. <laughs> yeah. I also would like to add that it's a, mm, it's a non-formal education where we do it. So mm -hmm. we let this youngster or the educator to interpret himself the meaning of this feeling in the body. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a safe space where he or she explores himself and what's going on with himself. And uh, our task as a support person is not to say the right answers, you know, oh, we know what does it mean, you know. But uh, our uh, task is also to create a safe space where he can uh, answer the question when I ask him, okay, what, what would you say, you know, what does it mean for you, this heaviness in the body, you know, what would, mm -hmm. how would you explain it, you know. So it is... Um, it is our task as a support persons to catch it. Okay, something is happening in the body, but it's our also we can create this uh, next uh, uh, learning space. You know, okay, 
how would you explain it? What would it mean for you as well? Mm -hmm. And what, what have been your experiences? You said you worked with uh, young people in the youth center. So how was it for you to bring this element of the body and, and use it in the constellations with young people? Well, of course, there is the moment, especially if they are young adults, that it's like, and if there are more people involved and they're like shy, you know, I don't know how it is being, but uh, it's, it's very slowly processed. Maybe in the first workshop, they're just getting to know, you know, okay, this is how we are going to work, you know, we're going to work more with the body. And honestly say youngsters, like, okay, maybe in the school or maybe in some activities you more use the mind you know but here you use more body you know and once they acknowledge that the rules of this uh, activity you know they get used to it they start to focus on it okay first activity we get know that we will use more body awareness second activity they are already more uh, trustful to themselves more focused on themselves more trusting me as a support person that they will more focused on the body what I noticed that the youngsters are better doing these uh, constellations when they are alone. It's not when they are in the group, but when they have individual consultations. Then they feel free and, uh, and they super like to be in charge of this activity. That uh, me as a, as, a, as a support person, I'm leading them only with questions. Okay, where would you like to be in this constellation? What do you see? What do you feel? How do you uh, interpret that? So my task is to create a really learning space for them where they can explore themselves, you know? And uh, the, these insights and reflections there for them, there it, it is happening natural. It is really happening natural. Mm -hmm. And when they give a feedback after these workshops, they say, wow this was so amazing you know uh, it's so good that i could do it uh, with myself you know i could understand the things i could make more the things and youngsters are curious to do that they are really curious to do that uh, and uh, just uh, just to trust just to trust this process and um, yeah mm -hmm. let it be what is your experience working with youth yes we we had uh, yeah i had i worked with several groups of uh, different ages and and uh, I would say that for for all of them, it was uh, totally different. And yeah, we had the same case that working individually was much more stronger for them because yeah, it was all time just for themselves and they could really go through all of these step by step. And the feedback that they gave was really encouraging. And they, they said, okay, I don't know what happened, but somehow I know my decision now. I know uh, in which direction I want to go. And uh, in the group setting, it was also the same. We had several uh, workshops uh, in a row in, in, uh, within one month. And uh, after the first workshop, we worked with the papers. So uh, choosing, uh, uh, choosing between several options to make a decision. And then when we met for the second workshop, they were like, oh, are we going again uh, to do the same things and stand on the papers? <laughs> <laughs> because for them, from the position of formal education, it was like, huh, <laughs> what are we doing here? And this looks so silly. And does it make sense? And then, of course, it's like peers, they are around them and they don't want to show that they actually like it <laughs> or that it's useful. But then at second and third workshop, they really uh, relaxed and got into it. And it was amazing to work with them. They were supporting each other. They were really... Uh, uh, learning how to respect each other's process and just be there without commenting and focus on themselves, on, uh, on their body. And uh, they, they said the same. So we don't know what happened, but somehow it happened and uh, it, it, it gives, uh, gives, some, gives us some answers without me saying anything to them, without giving any advice, without uh, being the guide, guidance uh, <laughs> for them. So it was, uh, for me, very, very useful experience, how they can create so many things by themselves uh, if they're given space to do so. I totally agree with you that this is a method that uh, is really self-directed, the learning method, that the youngster can create their own space, you know, they can create their own learning space and supporting each other, as you were saying, 
and um, to trust that youngsters uh, will also know what is their safety borders, you know, how deeply they want to discover what's going on with them, how deeply they want to go in this process, you know, how to ask a, a support from me as a facilitator and also from other youngsters. So it's really, really um, um, a method that is giving this free space for youngsters. And that's, that's a non-formal education, that's self-learning, you know, what we are bringing in. And I also want to share an example that uh, I went into the classroom and they immediately, I asked them what is the important question for them right now, you know, that they would like to work with. And they immediately started to talk about bullet bullying. <laughs> I'm always bad with this word. <laughs> And, uh, and they immediately started to share that they have this issue in the class, immediately. And I offered them, hmm, would you like to set up, you know, a constellation and to see what's going on in the class, you know, what's happening? And, uh, and they said, ah, oh, I wouldn't know, but let's do that. We are, they are interested in. So it was my invitation as a facilitator. Yeah, we can do that. And uh, we set up uh, this constellation and it was really amazing how they could uh, see different perspectives, make conclusions, make reflections of what's going on in the class, what's going on in relationship between each other. So it was a space that they created by themselves. They were leading by themselves and they could make uh, conclusions and reflections of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, the topic of relationships that you mentioned, it's really a, in, an important topic for teenagers. And there were many cases uh, when, when we worked and some colleagues, they also uh, had workshops in classrooms. And this was the topic that uh, emerged every time. It's like, oh, I have these two options, uh, two girls or two boys, and I don't know uh, which one to choose. And this was something that was so, so meaningful for them uh, to have this uh, good relationships inside of the classroom and, and outside of the classroom. Relationship yeah. with parents, uh, relationship mm -hmm. with mom or dad. My dad wants that I study uh, pharmacy. I want to study um, pedagogy. Such dilemmas that are happening with relationship and it puts a lot of pressure you know, on their shoulders, especially as a young person when you need to make a decision about the profession or life in such an early age. And, uh, and, and, and nobody is like um, creating the space to talk about relationship or how to build up the relationship, you know, how to create a healthy relationship. And uh, this uh, method can create this space, a safe space, how to, how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe we can also, we started about the technical things that uh, how do we set up the constellations and um, how do we use the body and um, not always when we are setting up the constellation the system uh, you need to have a representative maybe another person uh, that's a very I would say it's a luxury <laughs> it's really a luxury but when we work with youth it's not always the reality and uh, and also not my reality when I have been working. And very uh, very often I am using uh, in these workshops uh, uh, papers, chairs, wooden packs, um, stones, uh, um, shoes, buttons, shoes. Buttons. You know, yeah, whatever element there is uh, available that can represent uh, his own constellation. It's mm -hmm. it's also you also can create uh, and ask a youngster, okay, what would you like to use? What kind of elements you would use, uh, like to use? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a luxury if you can have a group, uh, like a real, um, real human beings, you know, who can represent the, the, the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I wanted to also uh, connect it to, to the question of body, what, what is always, not always, but many times uh, emerging. So. Uh, I, I get asked, uh, okay, so you're working with a body, this can be quite sensitive, can be, uh, can trigger out many things, um, emotions, sensations, so what to do then? And uh, 
this is what I, I love about this approach because it is showing us that doing nothing is more powerful than doing something. And uh, I've, I've learned that and I've been uh, also using it with, uh, in working with people. And uh, um, what I found more powerful, whenever there is something that is arising or showing or there is these emotions or sensations happening in the body, then the most powerful thing is to sit with them. And uh, this is, I would say, the answer to all of those questions that I've been getting. Okay, well, what if I don't know what to do uh, when somebody starts crying next to me? And then the, the answer is, well, you don't need to do anything. That's, that's the, the point because it is there if we give it a space and we give it a bit of time and we are there just present with the person, it will... Um, yeah, it will slowly uh, let go, opposed to the maybe most common, uh, very common understanding that whenever there is something happening in the body that we need to react on it, that we need to do something, we need to uh, get, get it out of our system or get rid of it, and then it just comes back. <laughs> it's like a boomerang, so it it's, uh, circles back and emerges again. And uh, I found this very valuable when, when working with, uh, with students. And for some, it was very difficult to understand. It's like, how, what do you mean we do nothing? Somebody should do something. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's just about the, the process of, uh, yeah, it's happening in my body. I acknowledge it. I see it. I feel it. Just sit with it. And uh, slowly, step by step, it, it gets released. Um, yeah, and we come to the point uh, that uh, what's the difference between when we are uh, focusing on this body approach and mind approach? What what would you say? What is what is the essence of it? Mm -hmm. Yes, when uh, we talked uh, about it uh, already before, and uh, I would say that when we are um, using the mind, I mean both mind and body, we we need them. <laughs> One without the other doesn't exist. Um, putting more focus on the mind, uh, what I have seen often keeps us in our problems, keeps us in our problem thinking because we are analyzing, overanalyzing, uh, thinking that we don't know enough uh, and then it's just, just a mess. And it leaves us in a very passive mode. Uh, and it's just, because if I'm just, if I have an issue that I need to work on and I'm sitting here all day just thinking, 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 not much will happen and I will remain having the same issue. While working through the body, I realize that it drives more action and uh, it makes us more active because it shows us that to, to make a change, to, to start something, we, we need to move. We need to change the position, we need to try out uh, something else. And um, I would say this is, uh, this is very important. And also, uh, often the mind uh, makes us tired when we're using all the time just the mind compared to using the, the whole body. I would say that it's more energizing uh, and it, it gives much more information and uh, insights into what is happening and what is the solution. I also want to add that uh, uh, very often when I'm working with you, and offer activity, okay, let's stand up, you know, and find a place in the classroom. They're like, uh, what? <laughs> why? Why we need to? Why? Why we need to stand up? You know, like, and what I see that they, the body is so passive, you know, because it's all the day are sitting in this chair. That when I propose this activity, you know, to use totally different way of thinking and totally different approach, it, it's it's really they don't know how to do it. You know, they don't know how to do it. You really need to stand up and do something about it. And um, and I think that in in our education approach, uh, not always, but mainly, we are super focused on mind. You know, reflecting, analyzing, double thinking. You know. But uh, it's not always uh, working as, as the best solution, you know. It's not always the case, you know. And body can uh, help us. It can really help us. Simple thing. Uh, when I ask a youngster to stand up and find a place in the classroom, and maybe if he's, if 
changes his position and shows you that he stands up on the table, it gives you a message as a facilitator, you know, something is happening in this youngster, you know, he wants to show off, maybe he wants, he has a power, you know, inside of his body that he needs to release. So it is something that uh, maybe even unconsciously, he is not aware of what's happening in his um, mind, but body can show to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what would you say then, uh, we already spoke about it in the, in the toolkit, about the cooperation between formal and non-formal education. How can these two cooperate to create more awareness of, of the body and the potential and how to use it? I think it's a bit uh, maybe allowed to say, but uh, somehow I have feeling that uh, we as the facilitators, educators and teachers, we need to start to use our own bodies. Because when I when I work with educators in the focus groups, actually adults are even a passive, or how do you say it, like more mm -hmm. passive, Perfect. yeah, more mm -hmm. passive, you know, than the youngsters are. And and when I say, hmm, but why don't you stand up and try out constellation? The answer is like, no, no, we are fine. We we are very good like that, you know. So I think the first thing when we come to uniting together formal and not formal education, trying out the things, it is happening through us. These youngsters will always see us as examples. You know, if we give an uh, invitation to try something new, it starts with me. You know, I try something new. I explore my own connection with the body. I explore how does it work, and then the youngster feels this safety. Okay. You know, a facilitator is open to try. Okay, I can also try out the thing. This is one thing. Uh, other thing that uh, what we can bring in is uh, very tiny things, you know, about connection with the body. Standing up, shaking off, you know, how, uh, showing up, uh, how do you feel today in the body position? Using the body, what is the movement in the body for me today? How, how do you sense it? It's really... Uh, something that we slowly are getting in uh, uh, using the body, not only during the sport lessons, it's not these 40 minutes, but we can use them in other lessons when, when we ask just a simply tasks, you know, how to, how to do that. Another thing that we also discover in toolkit, we are using the body to make very important decisions uh, regarding our professional life, regarding our career choices, do I go study, uh, as I mentioned, pharmacy or pedagogy? How does my body feel when I imagine that I will be a pharmacist or I will be a teacher? You know, what is my body saying? Uh, because we sometimes can very well lie to our mind what do we want and what we imagine, but we cannot lie to our body. You know, if my body immediately will squeeze and give impulses, mm -mm, that's not the one then uh, it's a, that is a decision that my, my body is saying. And within the toolkit, uh, we are discovering uh, workshops uh, exactly regarding the constellation, uh, how to use the body. And I will share the screen mm -hmm. uh, so you can see it maybe. Yeah, you can comment also, uh, here you see, toolkit that you can find on our website and also Facebook page and here is the first workshop that you see your your body is your brain maybe you can comment on this one Marcelo um, yes this uh, this workshop actually is in the beginning because when we were working on, the, on it we realized that there is a need for just one workshop to to raise awareness of how to work with the body and uh, it consists of steps that you can use to uh, in a group or just in one to one, one sessions with youth uh, for them to help them to uh, understand what it means uh, that they're using the potential of the whole body. And uh, there are several steps described there, including a body scan. So it's, uh, yeah, you can help me with, uh, with that. Um, yeah, in the steps we have uh, a body scan, uh, one basic in the second step, as you can see, simply for them to notice what is happening in, in their body, about their breath, about the temperature, about the position in which they are standing, uh, what is happening uh, around uh, the body. 
uh, simply to notice it because this is this is our shape this is our uh, physical form and there is a lot we are processing but maybe we don't just give it enough uh, attention and uh, and later on uh, there is one uh, practice with uh, problem and solution uh, because what what we found out and then what the solution focused approach is is uh, actually um, saying is that there is no connection between uh, a solution and a problem so if we have a problem it, that continues it means that we haven't found the solution and uh, this is uh, a constellation between a solution and a problem where they can uh, practice feeling how it is when I step on I, when I step on the solution, and when I step on the problem. And then they can observe also the different positions of this. Uh, if you're using papers on the floor, they can observe what is happening when they move these elements. Uh, is, is there a change inside of the body and what is it is telling them? And yeah, first in, in groups, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit uh, funny uh, for teenagers to do it. But later when they got used to it, they, they said, oh, okay, this is quite interesting to, to see because they realized that maybe their problem is behind their back and they're not actually looking at it or the solution is much closer than they uh, imagined in the beginning. Or we also worked with wooden pegs and then they realized, oh, well, I put uh, this uh, wooden doll too big. And when they started talking about it, they realized, oh, it's not actually that big. So they changed and put a smaller one and they realized, oh, okay, this is, this is not as hard as I imagined. If I can add to Marcela, it's uh, really experiencing uh, these um, elements, I problem solutions through the body it would be like you really sense what how does the solution feels in my body how does the problem feels you now in my body and more more focus bringing more and more this focus on uh, on 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 awareness on the body and here uh, you can see um uh, the set of the workshops that is um, a constellation about health career education employment family relationship and living conditions uh, maybe you have a comment on, uh, can you comment on this yes. one? Yes, so this uh, this whole set of workshop be, uh, workshops is based on the research that was previously done at, uh, in, within the project. And this is why we chose topic because we realized that the, the topics that are most relevant and the youth needs most uh, support is the topics of health, relationships, career choice, profession, education, employment. So we, uh, we formulated them in the, again in, in workshops. And for each of the topics, we chose uh, four, four elements. So you can see in, in this case, it's just uh, one element is I, then we have health, then a limiting health condition and my desired future. And again, the same goal, to experience, to sense through the body what is happening when I stand on each of these positions where am I turned uh, to what am I looking at and and simply to feel it what is happening Love yeah. yes, I yes I also wanted to add that it's we are exploring this relationship what's happening between these four elements and within the person he's doing by himself okay what is my health what is what is the maybe limitations of my health and where is the future where I'm heading for example, about constellation uh, regarding the career choice, here we can find the um, topics like me, uh, my desired career, so where I'm heading. Uh, very, very often youngsters are facing confusion regarding their career choice, so where they want to be, what, who they want to be, where they are going. It's, uh, it can be... Um, that they cannot um, make a decision, they have maybe dilemma, Another element that comes in is personal interest. This is something that naturally youngster likes to do. Naturally, he's interested in to do. Um, maybe he's interested in animals. Maybe he's interested in uh, arts. Maybe he's interested in nature. So there are like natural interests that can support him uh, to choose a career. And we are exploring together and mainly youngster is exploring what is relationship within himself, what is happening uh, within himself regarding this topic. Regarding the education, we have uh, elements that are myself, uh, my desired job. So 
where am I heading, you know, uh, in my professional life? And uh, it is some kind of uh, guidance to youngster where he wants to be and what kind of role education is playing in this road. So that's why there is this element of required education. So if I want to get this job and this is my professional way, so what kind of uh, education I need? Because in the research, we also discovered that uh, many youngsters uh, admit that they lack this uh, proper education in order to get their own desired job. And the fourth element is lack of motivation. That they don't find the reasons why they would like to be in education system. And, and, and you can see in these constellations, we acknowledge also the problem. We acknowledge that there is confusion or lack of motivation. We acknowledge, we don't hide from that, but we bring it on the table. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's find the relationship with what you want and, and what, what is holding you back what you want. About employment, something to add, Marcella? Yes, it is uh, the same structure and it's, uh, this one is more focused about on uh, employment and getting the desired job. So what is it, uh, if there is a job that, that I desire, uh, what kind of, uh, um, yeah, what is there uh, that is uh, pulling me to, towards that job? And then we have the financial independence that is often desired by the, the young people that um, doesn't have to be that they will get the financial independence through the, the, their desired job, but um, it is more likely that they will become more independent if they actually work on their desired job. And it, uh, also, like in other uh, constellations, uh, in other workshops, we have the fact that there is a lack of desired jobs. So this was a common issue for most of the people in the, in the research. They said that in their local communities, there are no desired jobs. And uh, in high school where I worked in the focus groups with, uh, with youth, most of them uh, had plans to leave from Croatia or, and uh, I know that in Slovenia it was pretty much similar in Latvia and sometimes so it's like the, their vision is that their desired job is somewhere else so this was the point of this workshop to see okay what is it that that is here at the moment now that can be done another one is about uh, family relationship that's a hot topic uh, Almost uh, every second, the youngster were coming up with this relationship uh, issue, either with um, both parents, one parent, grandparents, uh, sister, brother, whatever combination there is, it was uh, it was coming there. And uh, the elements that uh, what we saw were meaningful is the MS me, and uh, what is my desired future where do I want to have heading like where what do I want to reach in my life and here is not only professional wise but here is also like this uh, personal life as well maybe living conditions he wants to change maybe he wants to move to another place so some kind of big uh, picture or dream how he would like or she would like to imagine um, and live her own future and then there is this burden that is coming in it's the expectations of a family very often um either parents or the the another family member is putting some its own or his own uh, uh, expectations what youngsters should study or how he or she should um, um, get married, not get married, move, not to move to another place. So there is a burden on their shoulders. And this is the moment when a youngster needs to make his own desired choice, despite the expectations. Despite the fact that my dad wants that I become pharmacist, my desired future is to become a teacher and I need to make my choice. And that's really is a challenge for many youngsters. It's really a challenge and it requires strength and self-trust and self-independence and a lot of, the, yeah, a lot of elements, uh, resources inside to, to do it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, about employment? Yes, the uh, the elements that we found meaningful here were uh, my I my desired living conditions. Uh, we found that many uh, youngsters still were living with their parents, or they were living far away from the the place where they imagined their, their themselves living, or they couldn't afford to pay for an apartment or to get a place that they wanted and create their own living uh, space. Um, so this was something, uh, again, uh, as a big, bigger picture, what is it that they desire? And uh, with that, uh, we put the existing living conditions to recognize, okay, what is it that is limiting me uh, in, in a certain way? And next to that, we have advantages of existing uh, living conditions because maybe there is something in the current situation that can support me, that can help me to get to my desired living conditions and, uh, and get me then closer also to my desired future, like in the previous uh, workshops. So, yeah, in all these, um, in all these, uh, uh, workshops you can see that the, the pattern is the same how they are designed just the elements are changing and according to the meaningful topics that are for youngsters mm -hmm. yes and always these these elements can be uh, adapted so if you are working with one person or a group then uh, ask them what is it's meaningful for them what is it that is uh, supporting them or helping them and what is it that is making it harder or what is the burden that they are maybe facing in, in their family and for me what was when you were talking about expectations of the family I really uh, I remembered one anecdote um, when we were working on this topic and uh, uh, in the group I said that, that they know that they are successful when uh, their parents tell them that they're dis they disappointed them. <laughs> and, um, it, it, because it, it happens a lot that, uh, yeah, that our parents tell them that we are just disappointed, disappointment to them or that we didn't do things as we wanted. And I told them, well, this is a sign that you're making progress in life. And it was interesting to observe the group because some of them, they were like, oh, Finally, yeah. finally, it's like somebody, somebody said that out loud and it was like a huge, huge relief for them to, to realize that they don't need to do the things that parents or families expect from them. Or maybe the broader system, we have all of these different elements and things that have an impact on us. So this was a huge relief to hear from someone, yes you're getting more successful if, uh, if uh, you just uh, leave all of those expectations behind and somehow betray them. Uh, yeah, because I totally agree. I have, I have the same experience with youth that they really carry a lot of burden of expectations, not only from parents, also from society, also from peers, you know. And uh, what research showed that uh, very often these expectations are bringing them to wrong choice of career that's something that they are not interested in but because they were these expectations and they wanted to fulfill these expectations they go this road but it works you know just for one two years maximum or they finish the studies and they try out the job market and they realize no i'm not interested in that and these expectations can be really tricky and it, as earlier we support and as earlier we create this safe space to separate, okay, what do I really want and what are really expectations, then it's, there is a bigger chance that the youngster will really will take a own decision and own his own decisions, you know, in life, commit himself to his own road where he wants to go and what he wants to do in the life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, such, a, uh, such a conversation uh, regarding the body, body use of constellation. Uh, try out, be, be mm -hmm. curious, be curious about yourself, be curious, uh, uh, trying out these workshops, try with yourself. It's uh, before you go in the classrooms or workshops, try out, uh, explore, um, be like a child, you know, who is exploring the things, you know. And, uh, and 
and, and explore also with youngsters. It's not that these workshops, uh, you know, are that's what you need to do, you know. As Marcel was saying, you know, you can try out other elements, you know, you can try out something that is more meaningful for your group or exactly when you are working with youth. And we are here uh, next to you, around you, whenever you have comments, whenever you have a question or a need for support, uh, please write us on the Facebook uh, page, uh, write me or Marcella, and we would be happy to, to answer and to yeah, share our own experience as well. Yes, and thank you also from my side. This is a topic that the two of us we probably could uh, we could uh, talk about it for days <laughs> and it's something that we found so meaningful that we also want to continue exploring it and uh, there is a huge potential to work on it and uh, yes as Lama said just go for it explore it see how it is be brave despite maybe the fact that you might be afraid oh well what will the students say or maybe they they will make fun of it uh, yeah it's part of the process it just takes a bit of uh, practice and repetition and, and they will really get to it and um, yeah as i said in the beginning for me this is really a way how to be uh, create a meaningful transformation, how to empower them to use their full potential. Many times we talk about the full potential and when, when we're thinking only about the brain. And for me, the full potential means using my full body uh, in, uh, in, um, in balance with mind and the body and everything else that is there. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, absolutely, we are here at your disposal. When, whatever is there, just approach us and we will see if there is a way how we can support you. Thank you and talk to you next time. Yes. Bye. Ciao.